Okay, back to this problem. Here we go. Uh, I believe we are at um, part C here. Okay, right. Um, calculate the value of H plus. We did that. Write the equilibrium constant expression for the ionization of HOBr. There it is. Let's see. Then calculate the concentration of HOBr in a solution that has H plus equal to exactly 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now, did they give us Ka in this problem? They did. All right, so here we go. So 2.3 times 10 to the minus ninth is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth squared because they are telling us that they want us to substitute in the H plus here. So I apologize, we actually didn't need to do that in that case. Over HOBR, which in this case is going to be X. So we're just going to solve for X. X is going to be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth squared divided by 2.3 times 10 to the minus ninth that is going to be an answer in units of molarity, moles per liter, negative one. Yeah, so that should be correct. D, calculate the value of the free energy change. Again, we're going to use delta G equals negative RT ln of K, which equals negative 8.31. Now, guys, R can also be 0.0821. We're going to use that when we're dealing with PV equals NRT, but we're not in this case. The temperature, I told you it's at STP, which means we're at zero degrees Celsius and we're at one atmosphere. So I'm going to convert this to Kelvin by adding 273. I'm going to plop it right back in there. 273. I'm going to take my natural log and I'm going to take my K value, which I'm going to have to solve for now. So now when I get this, oh no, actually they gave me K. Silly, silly Mr. M. There's K, that's K in this case. So that's gonna be answered to D when you work it out. Um, again, delta G here should be greater than zero, which is gonna make it non-spontaneous. Please draw the graph that shows the titration of HOBR with a strong base label the curve. All right. So HOBR is a weak acid. So titration of a weak acid involves the pH with a strong base. You get this buffer zone where it's resisting the change in the pH due to the difficulty in removing that hydrogen and seven is going to be a little bit below it. So the pH at this point, pH is going to be greater than seven at equivalence. We also see here that the pH is equal to the pKa at the buffer zone. If you're wondering what the pKa is, it's simply the negative log of the Ka. So if you're doing this problem and it might ask you, are you at the buffer zone? You can look at the pH of the solution and if the pH happens to be equal to the pKa at that moment, then yeah, you're writing in there. Moving on to the next problem. All right. Lactic acid. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do my ice chart first. I do apologize. I'm going to go grab that reaction. Where is it? Okay. So H C three H five O three breaks into H plus. This is aqueous aqueous plus C3H5O3 minus aqueous. I'm going to do my ice chart. All right. I'm going to write out K. That should be inside there. I'm so tired. Okay, beginning of the problem. Here we go. Lactic acid is a monoproduct. That means one hydrogen. There it is right there. That disassociates. 
in solution as represented by the equation above. Lactic acid 1.66% disassociates in 0.5 molar, that should be O3, at 298 Kelvin. Okay, so this 0.5 is what we're going to put in right there. Makes this 0, makes this 0. Minus x, 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 0.5, x, x. So I'm going to go back to the Ka, and I'm going to say x squared over 0.5 is my Ka. Okay, i got to find x. Normally what they do is give you Ka. Let's go and find it. Okay, they did not give me Ka. Next, what they might do is give me pH, and then I would do 10 to the minus pH. They did not give me the pH. Can't do it. So they did tell me that it's 1.66% disassociated. That is how much it breaks off. Well, that means you take 1.66% of 0.5, which is multiplying 0.5 by 0 0.0166, and we get 0 0.0083. So that means that down here, these x's are 0 0.0083, and this is 0 0.0083. So we have our x's. Finding x, there's always going to be a little piece of information to find it. In this case, they gave you the percent disassociated. So here is A. Now I'm going to start the problem. Calculate the pH. Okay, for B, pH equals negative log of H plus. Therefore, pH equals negative log of this at equilibrium, which is 0 0.0083. Calculate delta G. Did that. Okay, delta G, negative RT ln of K equals negative 8.31 T 298 Kelvin. See that? Make sure you all see that. 298 Kelvin right there. <sighs> Times 298. Ln of K. Oh, so we got to calculate K in this in this case. All right. So we're going to take K A is going to be equal to 0 0.0083 squared divided by 0.5. We're going to take that value and we're going to plug it in there. Delta G is greater than zero, so it's spontaneous. All right. Moving on to D. Again, they want us to draw the titration curve. The weak acid, monoprotic. We got a buffer zone here. I'll say BZ. We got a pH value here that's greater than 7. Strong base. What's the pH equal to right here? pH equals pK. Again, titration of a strong acid looks more like this with no buffer zone. It's not what we have in this case. Okay, I'm going to stop right there and move on to the next podcast in a sec. Take care, guys.